Hello friends, today I would like to share a surprise weapon for the black pieces against the scotch game. It starts after white plays e4, black plays e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and d4. Here the main move for black is to take the pawn as white is probably threatening to advance the d-pawn and kick the knight out. So it takes and takes, after which white gets some central control and space advantage. On the other hand, the absent of the black spawn on e5 means that the e file is opened. And so if we were to play the classical way, usually black gets an attack against this e4 pawn on the e file. And if that attack is supported by more pieces, it really means a systematic way of playing with the black pieces. Most of the time, black also dreams of getting this break d5 under good circumstances to eliminate the white's e4 pawn for their d7 pawn and this way take away the central control and space advantage away from white. However, we're going to play it very differently. We're gonna play a surprise move that is objectively a bad one. It's been known for a long time and it's called Steinitz Variation. Steinitz was the first official world champion we had. And I was doing a stream for a large audience and I was asking them, how would you, dear viewers, act here with the white color? And most of them, I would say 90% of the people that were in the chat gave moves that entered a bad position for the white color. If white knows how to play this, and I'm going to show you, white gets a good advantage. And so if you're playing an opponent who is high level, experienced coach player, then this is not a move to play with the black pieces. But I bet that most people that you guys are going to play online, they're not studying these sidelines so well. And if you don't know how to play this with white, white can enter into huge trouble. So currently the pawn is under attack and there are a couple of ways we can play here with white. Let's first look at queen d3. After that, we can play knight f6 and apply the pressure on the pawn on e4. After natural knight c3 and bishop b4, black seems to be perfectly okay as it's unclear how to do how to defend the pawn on e4. So now black is already threatening to jump and take it and just look around. It's really unclear of what to do here with the white pieces. So there is an attempt to be playing knight to f5. Here we can take on e4 as the knight is pinned and cannot be taking that back. And okay, we have queen takes e4, for example, knight to e4 and black is okay here and it's an equal position. Of course, white still has to find some precise moves to claim an equality. So as we go back, queen d3 is definitely not something we're afraid of with the black pieces. So what about the most natural knight to c3? Now keep in mind if opponent is playing any kind of bishop d3 then uh, the knight lost its protection from the queen. So after knight to c3 we're playing bishop to b4. And again the pawn on e4 starts hanging. So if queen d3 we could enter similar lines with knight to f6. And the only way to play this with white for a win is to gambit the pawn. Now who would believe that in the main line of a good opening with the white color, on move 6 you have to give up a pawn. But that's pretty much the only way to play this. So the theoretical move is bishop to e2, giving away the e4 pawn. However, then white launches a great counterplay against the pawn on c7. So the pawn is hanging and black is taking the knight on c3, which damages white's pawn structure. There is no point in taking here as the queen will just go back and black is a pawn up. So white takes the pawn, the bishop with the pawn. And here we have king to d8. And that's the position that white can um, call much better for himself. Black is a pawn up. However, white has uh, a play against the uncastled black's king. And also there are ways to develop the initiative. I have to say, even here, it's not super, super clear of how to develop the initiative for white and say, open up the black's king. We can castle with white, knight to f6, and black has a long-term plan of, say, one of the many plans, kicking the knight out, playing rook to e8 and doing the rook lift, 
and after which we will go with the king save to f8. So it means that the pressure is on white. If white doesn't play the most ambitious move that develop really realistic threats in the next four or five moves, black will just kick the pony out, move the king to, to a shelter, and will be a healthy pawn up with the healthy pawn structure. Notice white is not only a pawn down, but also has a damaged pawn structure. But of course, there are ways and to use the D and B files and the ways to use the minor pieces to develop that kind of initiative. And if that's something you want to try with the black pieces, please uh, try this in your Blitz games online. If you're playing the Scotch game with the white pieces, then I, I think you will be happy to know these uh, opening moves to get maximum advantage. If you did enjoy the short analysis, please do subscribe to my chess channel. You can also consider hiring me as your personal online chess coach. My contacts are on the right. That's my full-time job at the moment. Stay safe, my friends, and continue exploring this amazing game. Bye-bye.